Welcome to RBA Today, the Responsible Business Alliance's online news program. I'm your host, Laura Landrow, and today I'm joined by the RBA's Chief Operations Officer, Deborah Albers. Deb, thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, Deb, the RBA just went through its code of conduct revision process. We'd like to hear about that. But first, can you tell us a little bit about the RBA code, what it covers, why it's important, and how it applies to companies and their supply chains? Absolutely. So the code of conduct has been the core of the RBA organization since we started back in 2004. It covers labor, health and safety, management systems, environment, and ethics. And underneath each of those major categories is various requirements that the membership has agreed are priorities for them and for their supply chain and things that they want to hold themselves accountable to. So we update this on a three-year basis, and this was that year. And can you tell us about the revision process? Why and how does the RBA update its code of conduct every three years? The process takes roughly a year. It always starts with a gap analysis from a third party, and they basically compare our code to other major schemes out there and let us know if there is any advancements that have been made in laws or with requirements from customers, NGOs, or governments. They're not currently represented in our code. Once we have that, we take that information back to our members and we ask them to add any color to it or add any detail as far as what, if anything, they would like to see represented in the code. That process takes about six months. Once we know the themes of what it is that we're doing, we will do deep dive sessions with the members via webinar in multiple time zones so that we can educate them on the risks and benefits of putting them into the code, how they might be audited, and who might be interested in seeing these things in not only their own facilities, but the facilities of the supply chain. We release a draft and we give the members 30 days to comment on that draft. And then we take all of the member feedback and from there we come up with final proposals and then we give them roughly 30 days to cast their vote. And those members cast their vote for us in the month of June and that process has now wrapped up. Interesting. And what are some of the key differences between the previous version 7.0 and the updated version of the code 8.0? We saw some really important themes coming up in this code of conduct revision, one of which was the environment. These are things like adding significant categories of scope three and an absolute target for greenhouse gas reduction. There were also other alignments with internationally recognized standards as well as local law that would include our enhancement of freedom of association and our requirement to pay a premium for overtime. There were other things that were pretty much being done, but not on the code, and that is special accommodations for disabilities. These things together are things workers are likely to find personally impactful, and we're happy with the changes. So Deb, when will the new version of the RBA code go into effect, and how can companies access it? We have already released a copy of the Redline code to all of the membership and they are allowed to release that information to their suppliers. We will not, however, be posting it online and it will not become effective until January of 24. And the reason for that is that there is still a lot of work to be done. So the next big thing is to change the way that we assess companies and make sure that we add in the new elements, but then we also have to go through and translate it, the code into 26 different languages. And finally, we need to train our members and our third party independent audit firms so that they are able to conduct assessments starting the beginning of the year. How does the RBA help its member companies and their suppliers meet the expectations and requirements outlined in the code? We have a number of different ways where we help members. One of the most common is to develop tools for them. And this allows us to help them with very specific details about what they'll need to do. Think of things like a calculator or a tracker of some kind, but there's also publications, white papers, practical guides that can help. And finally, we do trainings, webinars, in-person trainings, and those that are on demand that will really help them to understand the situation and how to 
move it forward in their supply chain, any obstacles that they may encounter and how to overcome them. And following up on that, how does the validated assessment program fit into the code? The VAP, or the Validated Assessment Program, is a way that members can check the performance of their supply chain against the code. One of the great things about this particular program is that it basically comes with a learning track or a, like a learning curriculum that says, these are the areas where the supplier needs to focus. And then it provides a way for them to demonstrate that they have improved their performance in those areas where they were challenged. Now, when we release a brand new code, there are things that they may not have been exposed to before, and that's where the trainings come in. To help them to come into conformance with this new requirement that we've added to the code. Again, thank you, Deb, for joining us today and for the information on this important update to the RBA Code of Conduct. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. We look forward to providing additional updates in future episodes of the RBA today. Thank you very much for your time.